All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Coffee with Nerds podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Lecknoise. With me, as always, is my good friend and co-host, Alex. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Not too bad. So we've had this discussion a significant amount in spurts over the yeah. last however many years of us hanging out yeah. and playing video games. And it's essentially the debate got bigger as professional gaming became mm. bigger because people started to recognize you know, 14 year old kids are winning the Fortnite yeah. championships and getting like $10 million and all that stuff. So they went into this issue of like, oh, people age out of video games and all this. It's a young man's esport. Yeah. I don't know how you want to describe it. It's a young man's game, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But in recent years, it has been proven more and more just not to be the case. And I never thought it was the case to begin with. And I had my reasons for that, reasons that you know I've discussed with you. So I figured we could use this time to kind of just discuss the state of professional video games, but just video game players in general, and raise the question of what makes somebody good at video games? Because you and our buddy constantly say that I'm better than you guys at video games. You are. Yes, but why? I, like we were talking about the other day and our friend was saying, it, probably a big one is I think you have better hand-eye coordination. So that helps you like with response time and stuff. Part of it for sure is going to be coordination. Absolutely. but yeah. And you like focus more than we do. Okay, so focus. Focus is a good one actually because there are, believe it or not, banned substances in esports. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, it makes sense. Anything that would like increase focus. Yeah. Everything. So the big one where this became like a thing, quote unquote, a thing is I don't know if you're familiar with Sonic Fox. No. Sonic Fox is a fighting game player. And for the games he plays, he's extremely good. And you could argue he's the greatest fighting game player of all time. He would be in the discussion. There, there yeah. are others in the discussion, but he's very good. He's won Mortal Kombat. has got like a, a plethora of games. Incredible fighting game player. Now, he is on, I believe it's ADHD medicine. Okay. Like it is prescribed to yeah. him sort of stuff, but what it does is because of ADHD, hmm. it, it helps focus. And so there came to be a debate at one point that, you know, he's technically taking a banned substance to, per- to help him perform. He's better at focusing and in a game where you're looking for minute details in every movement and small things to take advantage of. Yeah. Obviously the focus comes to a B. So that kind of spiraled into a discussion of like so is it a, are we allowed to ban it are we not allowed to ban it if you have a prescription if it's okay is this an unfair advantage did he only win all of these things because he was on this like if he wasn't on this would the other players at his level beat him yeah who knows obviously most likely not the case he's super good at fighting games he's played them enough probably wins anyway but it brought into the discussion of like yeah focus is obviously extremely important mm-hmm. and when we play Focus is not there. Well, no, we're just hanging out. Yeah, we're just hanging out. And that's fine. And I'd rather do that than actually try to win. Because, yeah. you know, we're not pro players. We're never going to be pro players. No. Who cares? Yeah, we're right? just playing to have fun. Playing to have fun. And that's the way to play it. But yeah, so obviously there is a focus aspect to it. And a lot of the things I'm going to bring up in this kind of shorter discussion, we'll see how long it takes, are things that like pro fighting game players have kind of brought to the forefront because that's the the pro circuit that I follow. Yeah. So I'm more familiar with what makes a fighting game person successful. But they're gonna be overlap. Yeah, I would obviously. So. Like all all video games have overlap. Mm-hmm. And focus is a big one because it's what they call the mental stack in video games. Yeah. It's really, really easy to do something when you're just waiting to do that one thing. Mm-hmm. But when you have a million other things that you have to keep track of while doing that, then all of a sudden you're not ready for that one thing. And then it looks like you have poor reaction or whatever. Yeah. Because that's, I guess, a big misconception about where the whole aged out of video games started is younger people have faster reactions. I mean, I think I, I would imagine that still helps. I don't think it would probably be the defining feature. Yes. But it probably helps. So it's true. You, your reaction time does slow as so you get older. Facts. Yeah. That's, that's just a pure fact. Yeah. But we started to associate that as the reason why the best Valorant players in the world were 16-year-olds yeah. at the time or something like that. But it's not the case. So reaction times do slow, but it's not going to slow to a significant amount to give one person a significant advantage. What it tends to be is I like to compare it to a hockey goalie. Hockey yeah. goalie... Is a very reactional based position. Yeah. But there's a reason why older hockey goalies are still dominant in the NHL. 
because there's more to being a goalie than just reacting to the puck that's shot at you. It's being positionally aware. It's taking up space. It's holding the right angles. It's anticipating where this guy's going to shoot based on a variety of factors. Yeah. And that's why the best goalies in the world aren't necessarily the ones with the fastest reaction times. Mm -hmm. It's the ones who have the most experience in interpreting the information mm -hmm. that's given to them across the rink or whatever. Yeah. Very similar in video games. The best players in the world at whatever game they're playing, they're good because they have experience in all the situations and they're expecting and they're looking to expect certain things to take advantage of those certain things. Yeah. And it has, I will say, little to do with reaction timing as much as it is proper anticipation of what my opponent or what the opposing team is going to do to me. Mm -hmm. Like nobody in, let's say, Siege or professional shooting game Nobody's just like, well, I'm just going to barge right in there, 360 no scope everybody because I have the best reaction time, right? Like, yeah. no, they hold angles, they expect certain approaches, they have a strategy to go in, regardless of the game, mm -hmm. to give themselves that advantage. Do you know who Daigo Umehara is? Nope. Of course you don't. That's I don't know okay. any pro gamers. So That's fair. Daigo Umehara is one of the OG Street Fighter pro players. Yeah. Some would argue he was the first professional Street Fighter player. And some would argue he was probably the first professional video game player. Okay. Because fighting games were the first kind of start of pro video gaming. Yeah. Because they came out way before like mm -hmm. competitive mm -hmm. shoes and all that. He is 43, 44, something like that right now. Yeah. Still one of the best players in the world. He is not the best player in the world. Like he's not expected to win mm -hmm. Capcom Cup or anything, but he's been ranked top two online. Like, he still competes. He finishes top 16, top 8 in all these yeah. worlds. And he's 44 years old. What he did, and this is what kind of attributes to this, this reaction time thing, is there was a bit of a kind of a joke slightly going around near the end of Street Fighter V. Yeah. So he played Guile. Guile has a very fast and very good sweep. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I want to say it's a seven frame startup. I could be wrong on that. It could be nine frame startup, which means that's a fast startup. It can punish a bunch of moves. It can react to a bunch of moves regardless. That's, yeah. that's not <laughs> okay. super important, but he would have training sessions where he was practicing reactions and with yeah. punishing moves with his sweep, which mm -hmm. a sweep also is very punishable. So if the other person blocks it, he's going to get hit for a big combo. So it's a high risk maneuver. And most people honestly were like, a lot of people in the fighting game community were not like laughing at him, but like, bro, like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. you can't train your reaction speed. This isn't going to help. Nothing's going to do that. Like, you're wasting your time sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So then he was in the final for the CPT Japan qualifier tournament to get in the Capcom Cup. And he was playing against Fudo, who was a 38-year-old fighting game player. So the old guys are winning yeah. in Japan. And I kid you not, he had probably... 12 whiff punishes with his sweep on moves that he trained against that people did not expect. And that's when everyone was like, oh shit, you know what? You can train reaction yeah, time. Yeah, well, you're making muscle memory and stuff. Yeah, too, and right? he's he's recognizing the situation. Then he, it was like impressive the amount of times he whiff punished something with a sweep, which was unheard of. Yeah. And he did that at 44 year old because he put himself in a situation where he was learning the timing, like you said, with muscle memory, but he was also anticipating those moves to come out neutral because mm. normally those are the safe moves that people would poke with or they would throw out because who's going to whiff punish it. And if yeah. they do, it's going to be like a low four that doesn't give Guile anything. So what's the point? Mm. And he, he was ready for it. He was anticipating it. And yes, he definitely missed some of these punished and yeah. got hit. But like he also at 44 years old, however, well, like, significant sweeps that you weren't seeing any 19 18 year old kid doing yeah so essentially what i'm saying is the myth about people aging out and reaction time is just that it's a myth yeah like yes it's a factor but you can train you mm. can be capable of having the reactions and although it does make somebody good at games obviously yeah it's not a, a significant factor like there are way other factors which is like the focus and the anticipation and yeah. building that mental stack and all that stuff yeah, yeah. Because aging out of games, the other reason why I think people thought video games were for younger audiences, but older people couldn't do it, is because when pro video game playing started happening, who do you think had the time to play a game and get good at it? Well, I mean, that's still true, right? Like kids have a lot more time to play games, which is why they're generally better than adults at them. Yeah, because when, let's say, Fortnite first yeah. became a thing... 
the 26 year old man with a full time job. Yeah, most people. Yeah, beyond like some streamers, right? Yeah, like he's not going to be able to invest eight hours a day to get mm-hmm. good at Fortnite. But that 15 year old kid who doesn't do anything after school. Yeah. Yeah, he can go home and play Fortnite all the time. Yeah. And then he gets really good at it because you're at work and you have a life and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And so that shrunk the the age pool of professional gamers to what people thought was like that 14 to 18 mark because those were the people playing the games at the time. Well, yeah, and especially when you're looking for like new players, like when a team's picking up a new person, it's probably going to be someone from that age range because again, like you said, adults who especially that aren't already pro gamers have jobs and things that they have to do. Yeah. So they can't devote the time, but a kid doesn't. Yeah, that's the the age of people that are playing, right? Like they have the time to be able to do that. Now that we're past that, we've seen that those kids who started at 16U as like the best whatever player in the world when they were 16 years old, well, they're still some yeah, of the best players in the world. Yeah, because they keep practicing it and they're financially aggrieved. So you have 26-year-old, 27-year-old yeah. pro video game players because that's what they've been doing. StarCraft Two has been on a professional run for 10 years. A bunch of the players are like 26, 27. They're like some of the best in the world. Yeah. Street Fighter, again, Street Fighter is run by old people in Japan. It's all people who are like 36 plus with two kids. Yeah. And they're like the best Street Fighter players in Japan. Honestly, it's run yeah. by the old guys because they've been able to play it consistently financially for mm-hmm. however long. Now, obviously, there's young players. There's always going to be young players. But well, it's just yeah. like the N- NBA, the NHL, the MLB. There's always a crop of kids who come up. And there's always some freak Victor Wembenyama who is seven foot 12 and dunking over kids at 18 years old. Yeah. And you're like... No one at any point says, oh, well, basketball is just a young man's game. 18 to 20 are the best players in the world. Like, no. Yeah, he's an outlier. And obviously, yeah, I like, mean, a lot of professional sports, the older guys are definitely the outliers. Uh, it's a balance. So there's definitely a range. But like, I would say it's probably the prime. I think it's considered like 28 to 32 is your prime athletic I mean, I can see functionality. That, yeah. so, but I meant like, you know, people like LeBron James and. Yeah, LeBron like James that, is an like, absolute outlier when it comes to sport. But he's also like one of those few physical human beings who are just designed yeah. to be more physical than every his, other human on the planet. Has his son made it to the NBA yet? Uh, this is his draft year. Okay, because I was going to say, wasn't that like, didn't he say that it was his goal at some point was to play in the league while his son was playing? Yes, his his goal was he was going to keep playing until he could play with his son for a year. Yeah. It's his son's draft year. This is a bit of a tangent, but I'm going to go <laughs> off it to explain it. Apparently, his kid's not that good. Oh yeah, he's isn't only there, done. Uh, he's only done one year of you know, uh, college ball. Isn't there like two? I thought he had two sons, and one was good, and one was not that good. Apparently, I think the younger one. Either way, apparently the one who's in who just finished his first season in yeah. college. Apparently, he's like you know you're not a first round draft pick sort yeah. of player. Like you're good, and you'll probably play. There's always up and down rumors, but yeah, that's the point for LeBron. And yeah, he's probably the best oldest player of all time. Yeah, like I don't think anybody's played as well as he has at the age he's at sort of thing yeah like when vince carter was his age he was averaging like six points a game coming off the bench just like a role player sort of thing Mm -hmm. where lebron is still putting up like 25 points per game yeah still very dominant player running the offense through him you're like come on man like you have to have all of the genetics yeah just all of them making space jam (laughs) (laughs) i feel like he did that just to, so that nobody could hold that MJ has that over him. I don't know. I mean, they've been talking about that for years, that LeBron James would be in the next Space Jam. Yeah. For like 20 years, it feels like. Yeah, but that's a quick couple minute tangent on, on LeBron James. But yeah. yeah, that's the idea with video games. It's There's always going to be that young mm-hmm. kid who comes yeah. in and does really well, but that's with everything. Yeah. There's always a young kid who comes in and does everything really, really freaking well. Yeah. Right, And there's always the old guys who've been playing forever who are still really good and are still competing at the highest level. Mm-hmm. So no one ages out of being good at video games. What it comes down to is how much do you practice that game? Yeah, That's pretty much it. Who knew that the secret to being good at anything is to spend time practicing? Yeah. <laughs> Never would have thought. Never would have thought was the case. But it's even more so with video games. Because there is a physical ceiling to some of us when it comes to... Oh, for actual sports. Yeah. Actual sports and athleticism. Like, some people have bad genetics and are just not sport people. Yeah. I don't think anybody... Or at least even specific sports at the very least, right? Yeah. Like, uh, the the five foot four guy, with a handful of exceptions... Is not going to play in the NBA, then? No. Doesn't matter if he's really good. He's, like... 
If you're just too small for some sports, that's it. Yeah, with a with a handful of exceptions. Of course, there are exceptions. Yeah. You have Nate Robinson, Muggsy Bowes, all but in general, yeah, you're probably shit out of luck. Mm-hmm. But even just beyond sports specific, there are some people who just can't do sport. Yeah, that happens. There are some genetic people who are just born with the ability no not coordination, not to play sports. They just can't do sports. Yeah, we can name a few. We can name one. Can't do sports. Okay, <laughs> shots fired. I don't think there's a human being on this planet who was born with such shitty genetics that they can't excel at video games if they tried. I mean, again, beyond some like, you know, specific outliers, but yeah. But like, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, some, like at the way the skills work with the controller or keyboard or mouse or whatever, mm-hmm. there really isn't anything physically holding you back yeah. to exceeding. It comes down to time and effort and practice and just putting in the effort. Yeah. Right. When you played Street Fighter three or six. Yeah. You didn't put in the effort. I did not. And because of that, you were god awful. Yeah. But you got silver, so good for you. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you won a match. Uh, I don't remember. I might have won one. You might have won one. I can't. Yeah. But, you might have won one. But I don't remember. But either way, it's just effort. One of the best examples of this, again from the fighting game community, is the fighting game player who unfortunately just passed away by the name of Burly Legs. Don't know his real name. Unfortunately, I just know his gamer tag or whatever. Yeah. It's Burly Legs. Broly Legs had genetic disorders where he was essentially not even in a wheelchair. He was on like a wheeled stretcher that he lied down on. And he played Street Fighter with one hand and his mouth. Yeah, I've seen people do that kind of stuff. One hand and his mouth. And he was like competitive at mm-hmm. the highest level. So y'all have no excuse. Yeah. <laughs> the man had one hand and a mouth and was yeah. pulling out combos that you would look at and be like, nah. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. So why is that, Alex? I don't care enough to learn. Because you don't care (laughs) enough to learn. And that's what it comes down to. Not much of a debate, but I just want to like kind of clear the air. It's it's less of a issue now because I think most people are recognizing that it's not about There are more older professional gamers now, right? Yeah. It was just for the longest time, people thought you were a professional gamer from ages 16 to 21 and then you were done. Yeah. That's... Absolutely not the case. What comes, what makes somebody good at games is practicing, learning the situations, learning the scenarios, knowing what to expect, knowing what to anticipate, and knowing the proper answer for the questions that will get posed to you. Yeah. Right? If you're if you're aware of the best peaking spots in any shooting game, mm-hmm. then yeah, you're going to give yourself an advantage. But if you're aware that they're aware that you're aware of those yeah. spots, and then it becomes that back and forth of like, okay. What are the six good spots that mm-hmm. I can attack from to keep it varied? And I expect him to come from one of these five spots. And how do I adjust for all of these things? And it's not just, I'm really good at snapping my wrist and getting a perfect headshot. It's yeah. anticipating to be prepared to create that opportunity. Yep. And then capitalizing on it with execution, which mm-hmm. execution is another thing. And that comes down to practice. Mm-hmm. Practice, 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 practice. Like all things in life, you get better at things yeah. by practicing things. Yeah. So what makes someone good at video games? Practice. Yeah, makes sense. Practice. Which begs the question as to why I'm better than you at Siege, Alex. I don't know. Again, I think you do like have... I think there is some inherent skill like involved with that type of stuff. I don't know. Like coordination is going to have some sort of Any game we play, you are better than than me and Devin. Like you're just better than us. Yes. Well, not any game. Uh, Like 90% of them. Well, yeah. I mean, Devin's better than me at Rocket League for sure. Yeah, but he also plays that a lot. Yeah, and I hold my own against him in Smash, and he plays Smash, and I don't yeah. have a Nintendo. I think that might just come down to just general video game experience. Maybe. Because I will argue, I've probably played more video games than you and so Devin in my life. Especially now, yeah. Like, even before that, like, I would say I was playing a lot more growing up. Yeah. But I played I, mean, a- I didn't own a console till high school. Yeah, I had computer games, but yeah, because of my brother, I had that console and we yeah. played a lot. So it's just it just comes down to being aware of more situations and stuff and practicing. And I'm sure coordination is part of it, but I'm wondering. And yet you can't play Mario. I'm bad at Mario. I don't like I don't like his movement. The game that five year olds play. Shush, shush. And we're talking classic Mario here. I'm sure I could kick the shit out of Wonder. I don't know. He still has that like slidey movement. Well, maybe not then. Okay, <laughs> just it's a. So it's the, it's the worst platformer of all the platformer games. Just play Mega Man. It's better. <laughs> it's Mario, but with a, a gun. Who doesn't like that? And boss fights. Actual boss fights. Not just jump over this guy and hit an axe. Sometimes you got to jump on their head three times. Ooh. I get to shoot them. 
<laughs> shoot them with a gun. <laughs> Blast Perhaps you can face. shoot them with fireballs. Yeah. But I have a constant fireball in a gun mm-hmm. that shoots lemons and limes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I'm bad at Mario. I don't know. I really don't. It's very strange. It is. It is super strange. I think it's because I've played a lot of platformers that I'm so used to how the other platformers work. Yeah. That switching over to Mario's movement and jump is just, it just doesn't work. I'm sure if I were to sit down and play Mario, I would get, yeah. I would get good at Mario. Not like professional Mario player good, which is like, oh, do you know how to shell jump and jump and do all these crazy pick up one frame tricks that are nuts or and like crazy. Crazy Mario Maker videos where it's like, make every single movement exactly right or you'll die. And then this guy's going to sit there for two hours yeah. and get it and be like, oh, cool. That was a fun level. Let's move on to the next one. You're like, yeah. damn it. How are you so good? Because you play nothing but Mario and you practice well, In those it. cases, they played nothing but that level for hours at a time usually. <laughs> yep. Did you hear about the Mario Maker one thing? No. It's a bit of a tangent, but we're, we're going to wrap this up. But like, so Nintendo announced that they were shutting down Mario, one ser- oh, yeah. Mario Maker 1 servers and there were four unbeaten levels. Well, don't you have to beat it to be able to post it? You have to beat yeah. it to post it. But there was four levels that nobody had okay. beaten outside of the person to create it. And a group of Mario streamers, essentially professional Mario yeah, players, just decided to they got all. together and like, we're going we're gonna to make sure that there's no unbeaten level mm-hmm. in Mario. And they beat all but one. And the one level, they spent like these, this group every day for like six hours a day yeah. was just practicing to beat this one very short level. Who everyone sweared at the time was, you know, an, a, a legit clear because there are ways to cheat the clearing system yeah. to get something posted. It was later revealed after all of this that the guy did actually cheat to get it up there. Uh, and he came out and said, and it was like, I did this as this, yada, 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 because he was also a good player. And he's like, I didn't think it was going to be this big of a deal, I was, yeah. whatever. But yeah, so officially they came together and they beat all Mario mm-hmm. Maker 1 levels in time before they got it. They had a countdown clock and everything because it was like, they had like a week to do it. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. Huge bump in streaming viewership, oh, I'm obviously. Sure, yeah. And then there's rumors that they want to try it for Mario Maker 2, depending on how long those servers stay up. Yeah, probably a while still. But yeah, it's like the idea that these super hard levels, these guys are playing it for like six hours on end mm-hmm. to just get the timing and muscle memory. And that's draining, man. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine how freaking draining. If I get stuck on a level for like 20 minutes, or like a Mario level, especially because they're not very long. Yeah. I'd be done. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay. That's it. Let's move on to a new one. You got me. Good job. Yeah. You're better than me at this game. I'm going to go play a game or a level that I can complete. Like a Mario level takes like two to three, like two to five minutes to beat. Maximum. In the side scroller ones. Maximum. Two minutes even is long. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. Like I actually, I think, I think 300 seconds was the time cap, which would be six minutes. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Five minutes. It would be five minutes. Yeah. And that's like the time camp. But most of them are like, hey, you're done in like 90 seconds. Yeah. So to do that for six hours on end. It's dedication. Yep. That's dedication. That's effort. That's practice. That's how you get good at anything. Mm-hmm. By God, did they get good at that one level yeah. enough to beat it that one time and then never touch it again? Yeah. Yeah. So thought I just wanted to talk about this today just to kind of highlight some points. Like, yeah, what makes somebody good at video games? It's just, it's just time spent. It's learning the situations. It's practicing the execution. Yeah. It's sure, obviously, reaction time does have a factor. But when everybody's super good, Mm -hmm. it doesn't play that much of a factor, right? Mm -hmm. Like people still get jumped on in Street Fighter, even though that's like hundreds of frames of time to react to. When I think it's 12 frames is the minimum amount of frames somebody needs to be able to react. I have no idea. I think that's what they determined is that 12 frames is a reactable window. Yeah. Which is nothing, obviously. Well, yeah. And still people are jumping in for like hundreds of frames and still getting caught with jumpings because it's a mental stack. It's mm-hmm. anticipating all these things. So yeah, the myth of you being too old to succeed at video games is gone. If you want to be really good at video games, just play. Yeah. Just practice, just play, put your heart into it and hope to God that your game, your game's competitive scene doesn't die before you get good at yeah. it. Yeah. Because all, all, we all know that person who's going to spend four years trying to get really freaking good at StarCraft II just for StarCraft 3 to come out, and then that switches everything. And you're like, well, shit, now I got to go learn that one. Yeah, I mean, you still have a good base, though, probably. You would have a good base, yeah. That's the thing. It's, there are certain skills that yeah. would carry over. They're called legacy skills. So, anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that. We had some tangents in there, and it wasn't the greatest stuff like topics, but it was stuff that I wanted yeah. to discuss and go over. So, yeah. yeah, let us know what you guys think makes someone good at video games, whether it's specific or general, whether you agree with what we said or don't. Let us know in the comments down below. Uh, With that said, before we wrap up, Alex, any final words? No, nothing else. 
Perfect. All right. Well, thank you for being my sounding board. Yep. And no thank you all for listening and enjoy the rest of your day. All right.